did you first hear anything that would resemble prog or prog rock? Well, I must have been about 10 years old and the neighbor I had at the moment, a friend called Patrick. He had an American dad and uh, he had lots of different records. He was Fleetwood Mac, The Who, Bob Dylan, you name it. Anyway, one day he played us uh, Roundabout from, yes, uh, the, the Fragile album. And that was the very first time and yeah, I must have been about 10 years old. And to me, I, it was just a good rock song and I liked it immediately, the, the harmony vocals, the yeah, everything about it. If there is an untried songwriting partner within or without the Flower Kings, who would that be? Could be someone in the Flower Kings you would like to write with or think it would be interesting, or it could be someone outside of the Flower Kings that you would like to try to write music together with. Uh, wow. Um... Outside the band, it's this Danish guy called Tim Christensen. I think he's a fabulous songwriter. Uh, I would love to team up with him. Uh, and within the band, I, I would say anyone within the band. Uh, I think we could, I mean, for instance, Zach. We come from totally different backgrounds. Who knows what a song written by Zach and me would sound like? Probably very odd, I guess. So, uh, endless opportunities there, but uh, outside the band, I think Tim Christensen would be very interesting. Uh, okay, here, here's a bit of a guitar question. <laughs> I'm sure many people wonder about this. How did you cope playing left-hand guitars while you are actually right-handed? If I remember right, you're right-handed, but ended up playing left-hand guitars. That's very odd. Very, and very interesting. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Uh, as you have noticed, Royne, I write with my right hand. I play guitar like a left-handed guy. When I started to play, I had the guitar like a right-handed guitar player. Nothing happened with my playing. And all of a sudden, the, the teacher, he asked me, are you sure? Or maybe you should try to change the guitar and play the other way around. And uh, I changed the strings, of course, and a month later I was, I was well, just as good as the young ladies. So uh, that's uh, when I realized that uh, that was the way for me to play guitar. Do you ever get nerdy and go online for hours checking out new amps, guitar pedals, and tech stuff in general for guitars or music? Do you ever do that? Well, uh, what can I say? Uh, when, when I need something, I go to Musik Verkstan in Uppsala and uh, I buy what I need. I, I don't spend that much time on the net. I don't have that in me. But uh, I love playing guitar and I love buying my things at, uh, like, this is turning out like a commercial, at uh, Musik Verkstan Uppsala. Did you ever imagine and envision yourself being an international prog rock star? Traveling around the world, selling albums all around the world, uh, being a progressive rock star. Would you imagine that when you were 15, 17, something like that? Well, of course I had dreams being a, but I, I wouldn't say a star. A famous rock musician, like being a part of UFO or Thin Lizzy, or maybe I not being a part of one of the big prog bands, but not like Michael Jackson or Madonna or something like that. that that's, uh, I don't know, that's not my cup of tea, but like a, a rock musician, a successful, a successful rock musician or a successful prog musician. And I, I mean, we're almost there, or we are already there. <laughs> I want to know the song that makes you cry from the first note, and why? Oof! Uh, hi Mirko, uh, Lilac Wine with Jeff Buckley is at least one of those songs. It's so emotional, and uh, but that, that's definitely one of those songs. What's the worst Christmas gift you ever had? I don't need to think that long, I remember it very well. 
I must have been around, yeah, once again, maybe like, like 10 years or something. I wished for Who Do We Think We Are by Deep Purple. And uh, under the Christmas tree, we had, uh, there was this uh, vinyl album line. And uh, when it was time for Christmas, I opened it up because I was pretty sure that it, it have to be uh, Who Do We Think We Are. But when I opened it up, it was a uh, Top of the Pops record with fake versions of, <laughs> of the, the hits of the time. I guess I was kind of diplomatic as a kid. I didn't want to show that I was, uh, I was not happy, but uh, I guess my mom did her best. I survived that quiz Christmas too, so, and here I am. You have free gas for your car for a period of three months. You can go everywhere but you must be alone. Give me three places you will visit and why. I'd go up to our summer house first. I would probably say I go on a round trip in Europe. And, and there's lots of places I would love to visit in Europe. And, and why not all the way down to you, Mirko, and uh, uh, pay you a visit in Napoli? Why not Göttingen in uh, Germany? I remember one of the first times we played in Germany, Jaime was in the band playing drums and Göttingen was quite a nice city as I remember it and we saw this was kind of a street food place where they had Krapfenöl and we had a hard time trying to figure out what Krapfenöl was. Is there any no singer and or no guitar player that inspires you in songwriting and even in playing? That's a tough one. I mean, some of the old, I mean, like classic writers. I don't know if uh, Elton John fits into the category you asked for, but Elton John is, uh, I really, really love his uh, music from the 70s. When you play in a band, you interact with the other band members and you you learn a lot along the way and, and uh, I have to say, I think I've got inspired from all of the guys I played with over the years in the band and, and uh, I don't think, if I'm being honest, I don't think the music I write would sound the way it does if it wasn't for Royne and uh, that I'm in the band. So that, that's, that's the way I look at it. So they, I definitely get inspired by playing in the Flower Kings. When did you first begin to sing? Isaac. When we started our first band, no one wanted to sing. And at the end of the day, I was, I was the one that refused the least. Uh, after a while, I, I kind of liked it. I was around 10, I had an acoustic guitar. Uh, we were called Space, I guess. Uh, and I played acoustic guitar. Uh, Patrick Cohen, my neighbor I mentioned earlier, he played the uh, uh, organ and s he also sang a little and Patrick Pettersson played drums. And we had, uh, we played the uh, original material and I remember one song we had was called Do You Know The Monster? Do you know the monster from the Black Sea? It doesn't want to eat you. He just wants to drink tea. Froberg, if there's anything musically you'd like to see TFK explore for future compositions, what would that be? Spontaneously, this is nothing I have thought about, but why not go for a rock opera? I think that would be cool. We, we, need, we need a good story. Well, that's it. Yeah, we, we, first of all, we need a good story. and uh, Why not go for a rock opera? I think we think we have that in us, actually. How and when did you meet Royna and Jonas? I think Royna and me, first time we met, I mean, we, that's a long time ago. I think it must have been around 1990 when Royna produced a demo by, uh, with a band I had at the moment, Solid Blue. That must have been the first time. On a blues jam at a rock club called Fellini, in Uppsala, uh, I joined 
I joined this band on stage. I don't even, don't even remember the name of the band, but Ryan had played guitar. And we did play some, I sang some blues songs with them. In 94, I recorded vocals for Ryan's solo album, The Flower King. And then I joined the band in 97. And Jonas, it was a, I re, the, the only thing I remember, it was a Tuesday. And he was supposed to, yeah, we were, we were going to try out this new bass player I, I knew nothing about. And he, he showed up on a Tuesday in the middle of the day with a horrible hangover. That is the first impression I had of Jonas. <laughs> he got the job anyway, so, and uh, he's still here. Do you have any upcoming plans with Hase Froberg Musical Companion? Uh, we are actually recording now. We just started this this weekend, and uh, that's the plan right now to finish the album that I hope to have finished sometime late in the spring, early summer, maybe for a release. Maybe before the summer, otherwise after the summer. That's the that's the plan for HFMC at the moment. Question number five for Hase Froberg: How do you typically like to warm up before a show? To start with. I have to say I'm sorry for making your life miserable, Zach. You're one of the guys I've destroyed all the cozy times backstage with my warm-up exercises. Maybe for 15, 20 minutes or something like that. So I start around 30 minutes before we go on stage. And uh, Well, I did take some uh, courses. It must have been around 87 or 88. Uh, where I did learn how to breathe properly and where to where to put uh, the words in the mouth when you sing. I really can't describe this in English, but te th this technique and the the, the vocal exercises has uh, been stuck with me since then, and I do it every time before before a show. Horrible for the band members to listen to this, but I guess they get used to it after a while. But uh, once again, I'm sorry, Zach. So Hasse, what was your first encounter with music and when did you decide that this is something you would like to do yourself? In fact, I don't even remember it myself. I've been told so many times by relatives. I went to see with my parents, of course, uh, I saw Hep Stars at a folk park, which is uh, like a, what do you say, a place for partying in Sweden during the summer. Out, it's an outdoor venue, and I saw this band, a Swedish pop band, actually Benny Andersson from ABBA played there. That throughout the whole concert, I was clapping hands, but according to my relatives, I was in ecstasy. Uh, so yeah, that was my probably my first, and I've been told that every time I heard Beatles on the radio, I started to, I mean, clap hands and stuff. So. Uh, I guess I started early playing wooden flute. So I started with that. The main goal was to play guitar and drums. Uh, so I did this year of flute, which I thought was not that fun, to be honest. But then uh, I learned to play the guitar and I also took uh, drum lessons. And uh, then I started the band with my friends and from there I mean, the, the, the main thing has been music and, and my main interest and my main, yeah, my, my passion in life, actually, so. How do you compose for your own band, since you don't have a, a home studio? I have the music in my head, and when we meet, I show the guys what to play. And uh, sometimes, uh, the music takes off uh, with the input from the guys and so on. Sometimes it stays more or less the same throughout, even when after the recording it sounds more or less exactly like I showed them. So it's very different from time to time. Uh, but you're right, I, I don't have a home studio. I'm, my technical abilities might not be the best either. Who are your five deserted island songs? That is really, really hard. I mean, Sheer Heart Attack by Queen is a favorite album, so I'd, I'd say In the Lap of the Gods by Queen. I think uh, Lover You Should Have Come Over 
with Jeff Buckley would have made it to that lonely island. One thing, one song I can come up with is Babe O'Reilly with The Who from Who's Next. And I'll say Close to the Edge by Yes. And uh, I really, really love the first Salem Al Fakir album. Yeah, th this is who I am. Why not This is Who I Am by Salem Al Fakir? How important are the lyrics to you? And what song from the Flower Kings do you consider the best lyric written? Well, it has become more and more important over the years. Uh, when I look back, for instance, to the, I mean, the Spellbound albums, to be honest, those lyrics, that's nothing I'm proud of. <laughs> yes, uh, when it comes to Flower Kings, right now when I'm thinking of it, I mean, Broken from the new Islands album, I think is... Uh, terrific. Uh, I really like that one. And Numbers. I think the lyrics to Numbers are pretty cool as well. What's your musical dream? Not an easy question, but it would be fantastic to play like plays venues from between five and, and 15,000. Probably be my musical dream. And why not? Uh, I'm, I'm, I remember I mentioned making a rock opera before. <laughs> why not bring that up again? Maybe do a rock opera. I don't think it will ever happen, but that would be cool. <laughs>